something as your ultimate trust, that becomes a God. In Ephesians 6, it says this. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of this darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, what does that mean? We war against rulers. What does that mean? Kings? What does that mean? The Greek word is archon, or from the word arche, or arche. We get the word arch, archangel, archangel, arch enemy, arch villain, arch diocese. What does it mean? Arch or arche means first. It means the chief. It means the, high, the head. You get the sense of spiritual warfare. What it's talking about here is ultimately against gods. What are gods? Gods, or, and, then they, and, then, and I believe de the demonic realm uses these things. But that an, ar an arche or an archon is something that's first. So whatever you put first, that's your god. Whatever you put first, there's only one first. God said, I am the first and the last, the alpha, the omega. So there's only one first, but when you put something else first, it's your God. Whatever you put first. If you put your family first, it's a God. Whatever you put first. Put yourself first, God. Whatever you, do, do, you, do you have anything that you put over God? That is God. That becomes your God. That's your bail. Whatever you put first in your action, your thoughts, what do you put first in your, what are you looking out for? It's just looking at, well, looking out for number one. True, but you're not number one. There's only one number one. But we naturally look out for number one because we are in the image of God and without, I mean, if we are cut ourselves off from God, we think we're number one. Who's first in your dreams? Who's first in what you're looking out for? When you get up in the morning, who's first? Is it God's purposes or your purposes? You want your purposes to be God's. But that's it. But that's, that's what's telling you here. It can be a goal. It can be what do you value most in your life? What do you put above everything else? What, what will you sacrifice everything for? Because, you know, a God is that which, they, which sacrifices are offered up. What will you sacrifice everything for? That's your God. Here's another test of gods. Your God is what you dwell on. What you focus on. Where you're spending most of your thought on, it's your God. Are you dwelling on God? Are you dwelling on His Word? Are you dwelling on Him, His love, His goodness, the cross? Or are you dwelling on something else? Are you dwelling on money all the time? Well, you know, there are believers who dwell on it. Can be, it can be in any way. You can be dwelling on money because you want money. Or you can be dwelling on money. Well, look how much. How much does this person make? What are they doing with their money? That's also a sign of carnality. Are you dwelling on, how about this? You're dwelling on problems all the time. If you're dwelling on problems all the time, the problem becomes your God. Because you're following it. Because you're reacting to it. You're dwelling on your looks. Dwelling on your possessions. Dwelling on what they did to you. The offense that they did to you. That's Godhood. Whatever that is. Or the object of your lust. God, a God is to be praised. God is to be praised. So the question is, what do you praise? What do you worship? What you praise and worship is your God. What do you lift up? Do you lift up yourself or do you lift up God? Who do you lift up more? When you're concerned about reputation, somebody's speaking about you, are you more concerned about your reputation or about God's reputation? Think about that. People speak about God against God all the time. Is that worrying? Does that get you? Or you more get, get you when somebody says one thing against you, that gets you completely. What do you get most excited about? What's your chief joy? You know, you might be singing the right songs, saying the right words, but what is your real joy? Are you making him your chief joy? That's why joy is so important in God. If you, the more joyous you are over God and the things of God, the more, the more holy you're going to live. Are you doing things because of, ro of just your do it? This is, or are you really delighting in God? You have to force yourself to do the things of God, or do you take joy in it? What you joy in becomes your God. Messiah is saying you cannot serve both. You cannot make both your chief joy. You can't put both first. And that's why the Bible says friendship with the world is enmity with God. The more you get into putting your joy in things of the world or worldly things, the more your joy for God's going to be taken away. You'll end up serving one or the other. Israel was created to follow God, to delight in God, to serve God. Israel stopped delighting in God. And what do they do? That means when you stop delighting in God, the enemy's gotten in. 
And that's where he's going to try to bring other things into your life. When you don't fill yourself up with God, he's going to come in. He's, there's going to be an idol coming in. If you don't serve one, what Messiah is saying, you're going to serve another. Or as Bob Dylan said, you've got to serve somebody. It may be the devil, it may be the Lord, but in the end you're going to serve somebody. You'll end up where that's true. So either way, so look at, look at, you know, look at how people who are not religious, look what happens when they go to rock concerts. They worship. They praise. They worship. They lift their hands up. You don't have to tell them to do it. You know, it's similar to religious worship because it's that man is made to worship. Look at how people react when they go to a, a football game. Shout, cheer, wow. I mean, they'll stay out in the cold, freezing, cold snow. How many believers will do that for a service? That's worship. That, one of the, you know, that's telling you we are made, each of us, to worship. And it's going to be one or the other, so you've got to choose. That's why, that's why Elijah said, choose this day, because you're going to worship one or the other. Choose, because if you don't worship God, you're worshiping something else. You're made to worship. You're a worshiper. And that shows you something. You look at the, you look at the history of the world and look at how, how many gods man formed. The Canaanites had gods, Baal, Mot, Anat, Fertility gods, gods part man, part bull. The Philistines had their gods. They were a, a sea people. So their chief god was Dagon, the, the fish god. The Egyptians had gods, Isis, Osiris, the Pharaoh. Part people, think, creatures, part animal, part, part human. The Babylonians, the Syrians had gods. Bel, Marduk, Ishtar. The Greeks had Zeus and Poseidon and Aphrodite and Dionysius. The Romans had Jupiter and Neptune and and all the God, Mercury, Venus, the Germans or the Germanic people, the Nordic people had Odin and Thor and Loki. Even the name Europe itself comes from a myth about a God. The Africans had gods, the South Americans had gods, the North Americans had, Indians had gods, the Indians of India had gods, they still do. The Chinese had gods, everybody had gods. Why? Because it tells you something, man was made to worship. And that tells you that even in a secular age, when you don't see that as much, it's telling you that man still has that in him to worship. They're overwhelmingly represented.